A lot of people will say, well, low ovarian reserve does not impact your natural fertility. And that is both true and false. The reason why we say this in a blanket statement is if you're 30 and you have a low ovarian reserve, let's say you have five eggs outside the vault instead of 20, that is low. Well, if you're still ovulating, you're gonna have one egg ovulate. So you and your best friend who's also 30, you're gonna have the exact same odds of getting pregnant in that month because you're both ovulating one egg and you have the same age. That's not a false statement and studies have shown that. However, a bigger important question that I always think we have to ask is, but why is my ovarian reserve low? And that's one thing that I wanna impart on you to say, are we looking for the things that we can? Are we controlling the variables that we can in order to have the best outcome? There are certainly things that can cause both a low AMH and can impact your natural fertility. Smoking cigarettes, endometriosis, autoimmune disease, insulin resistance. These things can contribute to both categories. So I think it's unfair of us to say, oh, your AMH is low, that's not gonna impact your odds of getting pregnant. I think we could say, we're reassured by your age that you're only 30, that your odds of also having genetic abnormalities in your chromosomes is overall lower, but that doesn't speak to the metabolic competency of the eggs. And if something is impacting how many you have, is it also impacting their quality. There are certainly factors that can impact both. On the other hand, if your ovarian reserve is low because you had a cyst when you were young and you had an ovary removed, or perhaps there's genetic factors that aren't impacting egg quality at all, just the quantity, that might put you in a different camp. So just getting a low test of ovarian reserve, in my brain as a fertility doctor, I'm always thinking, but why is this happening? And what else do I need to think about before we just say, this is the treatment that we need to do? So what we wanna think about when this is happening is we wanna make sure we're looking at some of the factors that can cause low ovarian reserve. And this is even more important if you truly have DOR, or your AMH is less than one, you're really starting to fall off the curve from normal. So are you doing anything with behaviors that can influence this? This is gonna be things, cigarette smoking, marijuana use are both known to impact your ovarian reserve. We also know that chronic inflammation and insulin resistance can contribute. So this is a factor we're looking at are we consuming a lot of highly processed foods? Are we pre-diabetic? Do we have markers of insulin resistance? Is this something we need to make lifestyle changes for or even medical treatment options to try to improve? There's also thoughts about, well, do we have an underlying autoimmune disease? Things like lupus, celiac disease, thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, those can impact your quality because they cause chronic inflammation inside the body as well. So undiagnosed autoimmune disease. In fact, if you come in with a very, very low AMH and you're young, we're checking a full thyroid panel. We are looking for thyroid autoimmune disease. We're looking at autoimmune antibodies for the ovaries, markers of insulin resistance, genetic factors. That is not gonna give us an answer 100% of the time. And that's so hard and frustrating. So what I tell patients is, Expecting that you're always gonna to get to the bottom might be an unrealistic expectation, but expecting that we're gonna do all the tests that we can, you should expect that. So a very thorough history, understanding when women in your family went into menopause, did anybody have infertility or low ovarian reserve, things like endometriosis or autoimmune disease can run in families, that's a really good history taking. Understanding also from lab testing, what is there that we can test and what can we not, but making sure that we're doing the minimum testing that we can, and then thinking about, well, are we adding to the puzzle? Very rarely is there one decision you're making that is ruining your account, ruining your infertility, or changing your ability to get pregnant. But the sum of decisions matter a lot. And this is why, especially if you have infertility or low reserve, it's really important for me to tell you these are the factors that you can control and this is what I want you to do if you find yourself in this position. These all are gonna harbor around trying to decrease inflammation in your body. We know that when it comes to egg quality, this is both a combination of genetic normalcy and metabolic competency. But what does that mean? Well, if you don't have as many eggs, the quality of them becomes even more important, so you should listen up to this. The genetic normalcy is largely based on your age because the chromosomes are in a perfect position inside your eggs and they are holding into that position until you ovulate. So simply by passage of time, the longer those eggs have been in your body, the older you are, the higher the likelihood that somebody's gonna get out of line and you're gonna have an increase in genetic abnormalities. That is closely tied to age. 
But what we don't always talk about as much is the metabolic competency of the eggs. And these are factors where the egg has a bigger job than just to hold genetics. It has to allow sperm in, it has to fertilize, it has to grow and develop. And in fact, the first few days of embryo life are completely dependent on the egg for its energy source and for all cellular functions. And this is why we do talk about mitochondria is not a buzzword, but the mitochondria inside the eggs, they fuel the entire embryo. It comes maternally through your egg. So having functioning mitochondria, having lower amount of reactive oxygen species, having decreased inflammation is going to improve the ability of the egg to do the function that it needs to. And in fact, when we look at women who have lower ovarian reserve or who have poorer outcomes, we can see that sometimes their eggs are not functioning as well metabolically. That it's not great news to hear, but it should in some way spark that there's more that you can do about this than we might otherwise be told. Because you can't control your age and you can't control your ovarian reserve. But if you say, well, each little choice that I make to decrease inflammation inside my body is going to help my mitochondria function better by giving them the fuel that they need so that my cells can work, okay, that feels very motivating to me. And so what are these things? These are not rocket science things, but the bulk of these are foundational principles of your day. So things like eating an anti-inflammatory diet, really high in fruits and vegetables and fiber. Remember that your gut health is going to reflect your hormonal health. So your gut microbiome needs fiber. Fiber comes from plants, not from animals. So you need to have a very plant forward diet if you wanna have a healthy gut and your gut's important in your hormone metabolism. It's also the first barrier for inflammation getting inside your body and a huge contributor to insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is talked about a lot and a big buzzword, but I think it's extra important in the realm of diminished ovarian reserve. Insulin is an important hormone, so we talk about estrogen, progesterone, and other hormones all the time, but insulin's job is to allow glucose to get into the cells. Your cells need glucose as fuel. So in the perfect world, you eat food, you have a spike of insulin so that this spike of glucose that comes after eating can then move into your cells so your cells can use that as fuel for all of their functions. Well, when your body sees high glucose levels a lot, it starts sending out more and more insulin in response. Your cell gets adjusted to seeing this constantly high elevated insulin and stops responding as it should. And this is what we mean when we say insulin resistance. This means that inside your bloodstream, you start to have high levels of glucose and high levels of insulin, but actually inside your cell, you have lower levels. This causes so many metabolic changes. One is that the cell then tells the liver, I need glucose, even though it's circulating in the blood, the liver starts to process and make more glucose, and then your blood glucose goes even higher. High insulin levels inside the blood cause you to deposit fat, they cause inflammation, and let's just think about at the ovary, they actually shift hormone production in the ovary. And this is a big player in things like PCOS, shifting into making more androgens and abnormal maturation of your eggs. So even though you might be ovulating, you might not be ovulating appropriately or the most mature egg. And this is just something that you are largely controlling by some of the dietary and lifestyle choices you make. So if we don't have as many eggs, we know that insulin resistance, even in IVF, in patients who do not have PCOS, can play a role in negative IVF outcomes. So stepping back to say, I have low ovarian reserve, what should I do about this? In addition to saying, getting to the bottom of what might or may not be going on is really important, we also wanna control the factors that we can. So that's why that anti-inflammatory diet, high in fruits and vegetables and fiber, we wanna make sure that we're moving your body, building and using skeletal muscle because the muscle allows you to use up that glucose in a different mechanism. So we can then lower the blood glucose levels, lower insulin and get a better response. We also wanna get sleep. That's where your body is going to clear some of this inflammation and also where your cells are gonna use up more of that glucose. So trying to become more insulin sensitive or responsive to insulin, you need to sleep and get a set amount of hours and try to adhere to a circadian rhythm. And then we wanna avoid toxins and things that are harmful. This is gonna be your cigarette smoking, your marijuana use, but also environmental toxins that exist as well. This is discussed extensively in the fertility formula, really trying to tie all of these lifestyle metrics back to fertility, inflammation, and insulin resistance and giving you a plan. And also in the hormone reset, which you can get right away if you pre-order the book, because I know you want something you can do right now. Mm -hmm.